Hey, what is up guys? This is Bailey Stein with Android Authority and this is the HTC Bolt. With a premium metal unibody build, large side chamfers, and familiar color options, it's fair to say that the HTC Bolt is quite similar to its cousin, the HTC 10, at least on the outside. This is great though, as we really like the HTC 10's design, and that opinion mostly transfers over to the Bolt's design. As expected, HTC has delivered yet another solid, well-built phone. The large chamfers provide a nice transition to the flat sides, and the tactilely differentiated power button helps make it more discoverable compared to the volume keys. The buttons are also satisfyingly clicky, just as they were on the 10. There are some notable differences though, too. The curved back has been flattened, removing a bit of the ergonomic feel from the 10 that we've come to love. The phone doesn't seem as slippery this time around though, which is important, as it has received a size bump to 5.5 inches from 5.2 inches on the 10. The Bolt also introduces what many have been asking for a while now, water resistance. With IP57 certification, the phone can be submerged in up to 1 meter of water for up to 30 minutes. This should be enough to protect the Bolt from minor accidents, although you won't want to intentionally submerge the phone, as HTC says that liquid damage may not be covered under warranty. The navigation keys on the chin of the phone are both illuminated and placed in the standard layout. The home key, while not a physical tactile button, is sort of a large cutout in order to double as a fast and accurate fingerprint reader. It's not the fastest out there, but it's faster than the Galaxy S7's reader, which is to say it does very well. The HTC Bolt features a 5.5 inch Quad HD Super LCD 3 display, which is quite frankly wonderful. It seems to be slightly different than the HTC 10's display, but it still offers excellent contrast and nice colors while not appearing oversaturated. Viewing angles are good too, although not exceptional. Our biggest complaint is with the maximum brightness. While it's good enough for indoor use, it can seem dim when outside, especially in direct sunlight. On a more positive note, the display is coated in Corning Gorilla Glass 5, which offers some of the best scratch protection available today. Under the hood, the HTC Bolt is being powered by 3GB of RAM and a Qualcomm Snapdragon 810. The latter is definitely a head-scratcher, as this is a flagship smartphone and the 810 is now a 2-year-old processor. With the 810, you'll be missing out on better performance, more efficiency, and fewer heat issues that are offered by the Snapdragon 820 and 821. So why did HTC go with the 10? Well, we've heard that HTC was forced to compromise as the newer processors were not certified to support Sprint's LTE Plus network during development, which is ultimately the core purpose of this phone. Despite the older processor, day-to-day -day performance is absolutely fine, which can be partially credited to the many disabled system animations, which make the experience feel a tad snappier than stock Android. The problems with the 820 instead lie primarily with heat output, as we found the Bolt to heat up easily, especially while charging. As you may already know, the HTC Bolt is exclusive to Sprint, so you won't be able to use it with any other carrier. If you are on Sprint though, the HTC Bolt has a unique selling point. Support for Sprint's new LTE Plus network, which touts much faster data speeds. Unfortunately, LTE Plus just isn't that accessible at the moment. For example, Sprint offers zero LTE Plus coverage within a 75 mile radius of our testing area. What's worse is that even in a small but considerable city of 15,000 people, normal LTE is spotty and where it does work, it's limited to around 2 to 3 megabits per second. This is comically bad compared to the speeds of above 100 megabits per second we've seen from Verizon's LTE Advanced Network which is widely available in the same city. Now, obviously Sprint's network isn't HTC's problem, but since this phone is only available on Sprint, these issues do inevitably come with the phone. Moving on to storage, the HTC Bolt includes 32 gigabytes out of the box, but that can be expanded via a micro SD card using the second tray on the left side of the phone. Unfortunately, HTC's boom sound has gone by the wayside here, and we're left with an average sounding side firing speaker. It's definitely better than the Galaxy S7 speaker, but it's a bit disappointing compared to the HTC 10's higher quality speaker setup. For most users though, its volume and low distortion will be good enough. 
When it comes to external audio, however, the Bolt is riddled with compromise. Although it's using the same excellent 24-bit DAC as the HTC 10, there's no 3.5mm headphone jack, so the Bolt instead relies on the USB Type-C charging port for wired audio. To clarify, this in particular isn't inherently bad given that it's the way of the future. The problems begin with how HTC has set this up for people who are still making the transition to USB Type-C audio, which is virtually everyone. Check out our written review linked below for the full details, but the main points are that there isn't an adapter in the box, third-party adapters won't work, HTC is only offering a free adapter for those who purchased the phone before January 31st, and HTC isn't selling adapters. Now, to be fair, the Bolt does come with some pretty nice earbuds in the box. They even work with the phone's software BoomSound Adaptive Audio, which is used to adjust audio levels based on scans of your ears and the surrounding environment. This feature actually works quite well and results in noticeably better audio. The Bolt includes a 3200 milliamp hour battery, and although that's 200 milliamp hours more than the HTC 10's battery, our real-world battery tests delivered some disappointing results. Getting through a full day was a challenge, even while averaging just 2 hours and 40 minutes of screen on time. However, it's worth mentioning that our tests were conducted with a poor network signal, which may have negatively impacted our results. While you might be able to get more usage in an area with better coverage, we wouldn't count on more than a full day with 3.5 hours of screen on time. Unfortunately, the Bolt's Quick Charge 2.0 wasn't so quick in our testing. In 30 minutes, the phone went from 0 to about 25%, which is well below average, especially at this price. The HTC Bolt's rear camera is a 16 megapixel f2.0 shooter with optical image stabilization, and it delivers images similar in quality to those produced by the HTC 10. That is to say, the camera is very good, despite not beating out the Galaxy S7. Pictures are plenty sharp near the center, and a bit soft near the corners, but that's not very noticeable. The colors are pleasing, and most of the images showcase great dynamic range. There also isn't too much saturation, which can't be said for the Galaxy S7's photos. In darker environments, the Bolt still does reasonably well. Images are expectedly more grainy, less punchy, and softer, but you can still get some really nice shots, even when you're working with less than ideal lighting. The Bolt's front-facing camera performs even better relative to competing options. It's an 8 megapixel f2.4 camera, and it delivers excellent results which will please anyone wishing to capture high-quality selfies. For video, the Bolt can do up to 4K at 30p, and as you can see, video looks pretty good. And that's the case for software too, at least for HTC's contributions. We're looking at HTC's familiar Sense UI with great features like blink feed and themes, as well as a number of tasteful tweaks. HTC has had lots of time to hone their software experience, so it's no surprise that their expertise is almost palpable when using the Bolt. Although some will still cry for stock Android, this is certainly one of the lighter and more polished Android skins that we've had the pleasure of using. Oh, and it's running Android 7.0 Nougat out of the box, which is the latest version of Android from Google. We expect that HTC will continue to deliver OS and security updates to this phone for the foreseeable future. Once again, however, HTC's efforts are brought down heavily by Sprint. Our review unit arrived with more than 30 individual bloatware apps, which required two separate folders to showcase. More than half of these apps cannot be uninstalled, which can be very frustrating to the end user. Add on random and intrusive sprint pop-ups trying to upsell unnecessary services like VPN, and you have an experience yet again compromised by Sprint. The HTC Bolt is available in both gunmetal and glacial silver on Sprint for a base price of $600, with 24-month financing available at $25 per month for those with good credit. We do expect that this phone will go on sale frequently though, so if you're interested in purchasing one, you'll want to keep an eye out for those sales. Unfortunately, the HTC Bolt is perhaps the most compromised smartphone that we've recently reviewed. We like its design, display, and camera, but it simply has too many small issues for its $600 price tag for us to make even a conditional recommendation. This is the day and age of phones like the ZTE Axon 7 and OnePlus 3T, which cost almost half as much as the Bolt and offer much better experiences. If you're determined to stay with Sprint, however, we recommend waiting for either the HTC 11 
or Samsung Galaxy S8, which should be released with LTE Plus support within the next few months. If LTE Plus isn't important to you and you need a phone now, you can't go wrong with the better overall and even slightly cheaper HTC 10. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Also, if you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Finally, be sure to visit the Android Authority website for additional coverage as we are your source for all things Android.